Hello dear students, I am Dr. Prachi and today our topic is adipose tissue. So to begin with, let's introduce you to this topic. Adipose tissue is actually a very loose connective tissue and it is made up of adipocytes. These adipocytes are actually nothing but fat cells and their main role is to store fat in the form of energy and of course it also gives proper cushioning to the body, also provides heat to the body and therefore uh, these as you can see here fat cells are adipocytes they are always found in clusters in aggregates together in a bunch and they are more in females than in men so the females body has up to 25 percent of fat and in males you will find 15 to 20 percent of body weight now where do you find this the location of fat the fat is found just under the skin which is subcutaneously and it also gives a proper surface body surface to the skin and also the cushioning which is act actually meant to protect the body from any kind of mechanical injury so there are you can see as in this figure you can see these areas are which are uh, having lot of fat so this fat is also found around the belly that is around viscera all the visceral organs are cushioned by fat cells or adipose tissue as well as you can see uh, as mentioned here these uh, are specially found around kidneys behind the eyeballs and they also fill spaces between the tissues because all these organs have to be kept in place um, the females have more fat in the breasts and of course within the abdomen also there is lot of visceral fat the uh, fat is around the heart here you can see uh, this diagram is showing you the location of fat wherever it is present now this adipose tissue it can expand in two ways one is hypertrophy and the other is hyperplasia hypertrophy means as you can understand by the word itself trophy means nutrition something related with more of nutrition so hypertrophy is actually nothing but enlargement of these tissues and hyperplasia is something that the number of the cells will increase fine so they can uh, develop themselves in these two ways now what are they for adipose tissue ka actually what function do they perform so first thing you understand is that they are your energy reservoirs in the body second is they are found in the subcutaneous layer of the skin so they shape up the surface of the body it gives a very smooth surface to the body then these deposits are in the form of pads and they can act as shock absorbers so they are found in your heels your toe pads in the feet next is it fills spaces between structures and protects them of course sorts of keeping them in place or cushioning them and also a very important function is to keep up the thermal insulation of the body so it contributes to thermal insulation the viscera are held in position by adipose tissue there is a hormone called leptin which is secreted by them and of course all the fat in the body is stored in adipose tissue what kind of fat is there in the body so here i mentioned a few names which are very important for you to understand of course you must be uh, hearing them in day to day life also so they are triglycerides phospholipids cholesterol bile salts vitamin a d e and k as you know they are all fat soluble vitamins fatty acids adrenocortical and sex hormones what are triglycerides the, these few terms will be uh, taking up here so triglycerides are actually sort of fat which are absolutely insoluble in water and their calorific value is high than proteins or of course carbohydrates also because lipids have the maximum energy in them the chylomicrons in our body i am sure in digestive system you must have gone through these topics so chylomicrons are of course they are lipoproteins very small microscopic they are formed from the lipids which are ingested in epithelial cells from the lining of the small intestine they are transported in blood and lymph 
and they consist of a core which contains mainly triglycerides which are surrounded by a very stabilizing mono layer of phospholipids cost cholesterol and some more lipoproteins so in this diagram if you can see the these blue uh, droplets here they are all phospholipids and in the center you will find triglycerides of course the fat which is taken up by the body can be of so many types so what you want you should know here is these basic types of dietary fats they can be saturated mono or polysaturated fats saturated fats includes the animal fats all the animal fats palm oil coconut oil and the triglycerides also monosaturated fats are olive oil peanut oil etc and polysaturated ones are corn oil sunflower oil sesame oil and soya bean oil etc what are miscellaneous miscellaneous if you have uh, read again in your class 12th or uh, in the uh, digestive system physiology you all know after di digestion the fatty acids and the monoglycerides they all interact with bile salts and they over there they are converted into these spherical bodies called miscellaneous <clears throat> they contain monoglycerides and fatty acids they also contain the bile salts and of course they help or make absorption of fats easier the lipoproteins as the name suggests is a combination of lipid molecule along with a protein molecule they are of classified as uh, according to their size and the proportions of proteins they contain so if they contain very low density lipoproteins we call them vldl intermediate density lipoproteins are idl low density lipoproteins are ldl and high density lipoproteins are hdl the structure of lipoprotein is something like this there are triglyceride molecules within it which are uh, surrounded by cholesterol which is bound to fatty acids and uh, around or surrounding it are again phospholipids proteins and uh, free cholesterol which make up the whole structure we move on to adipose tissue classification which again is classified into two major types according to its location its structure color and functions so we have what or white adipose tissue commonly called what and brown adipose tissue commonly called bat or bat as you can see this diagram here uh, i'm showing you white adipose tissue the color of this structure is white and this brown adipose tissue is brown in color and somewhere in between is a beige adipose tissue also known as beat here you can see a big uh, droplet this droplet is fat droplet and red ones are mitochondria so uh, lesser mitochondria but over here you can see a plenty of mitochondria and therefore there is lot of energy produced in bat or brown adipose tissue which is found mostly in newborns and children and uh, this provides lot of energy to them white adipose tissue will study first and then we'll go to brown adipose tissue so white adipocytes are also unilocular they are having white spaces which are typically very large and they are found in many organs throughout the body and they typically form 20% of the body weight in an, in an adult the white adipose tissue is specialized for relatively long term energy storage and white adipose sites contain a single huge droplet of liquid filling almost the entire large droplet of triglycerides the white adipose sites can store triglycerides derived from three sources dietary fats which are brought to the cells via circulation as chylomicrons we just saw the lipids synthesized in the liver and transported in blood with very low density lipoproteins also known as vldl and free fatty acids and glycerol synthesized by the adipocytes the next classification is brown adipose tissue or commonly called bat brown adipose tissue constitutes 2 to 5% of the newborn body weight in small babies when they are born most of the fat is 2 to 5% is actually uh, brown adipose tissue and it is located mainly in the back their neck and shoulders and is greatly reduced as they grow up they become adolescent in adults it is found only 
in scattered areas especially around kidneys adrenal glands aorta and mediastinum the color of brown fat is due to abundant mitochondria we just talked about it which is scattered among the lipid droplets and large number of blood capillaries in this tissue the main function of these multilocular adipose cells is to produce heat by non shivering thermogenesis you know this the newborns cannot shiver and so they require non shivering thermogenesis it is a process of heat production in organisms without shivering there is warmth in the body what is the difference between white and brown adipose tissue so very important topic again white adipose tissue they are the more common more common type of tissue specialized for fat storage and they consist of cells containing one large cytoplasmic droplet of whitish yellow fat over here you can see in the picture white fat cell brown adipose tissue contains cells with multiple lipid droplets over here you can easily make out they are interspersed among abundant mitochondria these brown structures dark brown structures are mitochondria and the, this helps them uh, get, get a darker color the brown adipocytes release heat and function to warm up the blood and both types of adipose tissue have rich supply of blood and adipocytes now moving to lipids the three classes of lipids are triglycerides phospholipids and sterols so triglycerides are fats and oils phospholipids are lecithin and sterols are uh, for example cholesterol is there any difference between fats and lipids why do we sometimes call them fats and sometimes lipids so fats we know is a group of water insoluble energy giving organic compound which is composed of carbon hydrogen and oxygen atoms whereas lipid again is a fat like molecule it's a major building block of the cell of animals the lipids are organic it means they are also made up of carbon atoms and they also do not dissolve in water the lipids if we talk about vldl which are smaller complexes they are very low density lipoproteins and so they are uh, they provide a greater surface to volume ratio so similar lipids and proteins composition is in chylomicrons also synthesized from lipids in liver cells and they are released into blood stream the vldl particles mainly carry triglycerides to the tissues how is lipid stored and then moved or mobilized from the adipocytes so here you can uh, see the adipocyte tissues both the chylomicrons vldl they are both hydrolyzed by an enzyme called lipoprotein lipase and this enzyme is synthesized by adipocytes and transferred to the capillary cell free fatty acids then enter the adipocytes by diffusion within the adipocyte free fatty acids they combine with glycerol supplied by glucose metabolism to form triglycerides then they are deposited in growing lipid droplets so insulin also stimulates glucose uptake by adipocytes and accelerates its conversion into triglycerides and the production of lipoprotein lipase also so why were we studying all this tissue we should know what is the clinical significance of lipids so one very important is fatty liver these days it is a very common opd problem people come with this problem of fatty liver in this diagram i am trying to show you this is a picture of a normal liver the fatty liver is nothing but lot of fat around the liver accumulates so that is that actually uh, hinders the metabolism of liver cells so this is not a very good sign second is obesity a common problem these days obesity you all know is nothing but fatty people who keep on eating processed food and maybe lack of exercise or any other reason and develop to become fat then is cachexia cachexia is again important as this pic shows a person who is cachexic see cachexia can be due to protein loss due to lot due to too much of fat loss and it can also be a sign of um, Uh, long term prevailing illnesses and maybe uh, not a very good sign then we come to anorexia nervosa anorexia nervosa is a condition in which the person fears to eat food thinking that the food eating will make him or her very fatty so this is anorexia nervosa in which the person does wants to eat food is hungry but is scared of eating food because of the thought of becoming fat 
then atherosclerosis atherosclerosis you know is a very uh, common condition the vessels start accumulating vessels start accumulating lot of cholesterol and due to which the capillaries or the vessels become clogged so this is a pic of um, atherosclerosis then is xanthomatosis xanthomatosis if you have seen people with these kind of uh, conditions on the skin these are nothing but uh, a sign of fat increase in the body and level we say um, the go and get your lipid profile done lipid profile means uh, go and get it checked in the laboratory if your fat levels or your adipose uh, your lipid level in the body is okay or not you can see these structures around the eyes especially they start showing like this so this condition is known as xanthomatosis then hyperlipoproteinemia and hypolipoproteinemia are conditions like hypolipoproteinemia is a condition where there is a severe lack in adipose tissue of the body which is uh, sometimes genetic disorder also and hyperlipoproteinemia uh, is too much of adipose tissue in the body so these are clinically you should know wh uh, what exactly adipose tissue is meant for now some normal lipid levels in the blood which uh, should be on your fingertips all the time total cholesterol in the body should be below 200 milligrams per decil deciliters the ldl level should be less than 100 mg per dl hdl should be more than 40 mg per deciliter the triglycerides again should be less than 150 milligrams and uh, all these ranges actually vary with age and your uh, in males and females and a few other factors like uh, habits or lifestyle etc so always it's essential to consult your healthcare person to determine all the uh, factors and then check the lipid levels but these are basic baselines so that was for today i hope you liked the content and if you did do share your thoughts in the comment section with me till then bye bye